Hey everybody, this video is our solution to problem six from the fall 2021 Math 302 final here at Cal State Fullerton. This problem is just a very foundational question from basic group theory. So we have a group G with identity E and some element X in G. And we want to prove that if I have two elements Y, Z, and G such that XY is equal to E and XZ is equal to E, then Y is equal to Z. So this is actually called, or at least is a special case of what's called the cancellation law for groups. So you might think here, look, I have x, y equals x, z. And if we were talking about integers and x wasn't equal to zero, then I could just cancel the x's. So the question is, can we cancel in a group like this? And the answer is yes. So we'll work through the argument here. Uh, so first thing. If I know that x, y is equal to x, z, it turns out it ha doesn't even matter that they're both equal to the identity. Although that would give us a different way of interpreting this, but we'll talk about that at the end. So just knowing x, y is equal to x, z would imply if I multiply both sides on the left by x inverse, right? We're in a group. We know that every element is invertible. So if I multiply both sides, by x inverse, then I'll get that the x, x inverse times the product xy is equal to x inverse times the product xz. And now I can use the associativity in a group. Okay, so I know that I can change the order, or wh rather change the where I put the parentheses. So I can make this x inverse x and then times y and x inverse x and then times z. But x inverse times x is the identity element. So this is equal to the identity element times y and the identity element times z. But now, if I multiply the identity times y, I get y. And if I multiply the identity times z, I get z. So I'm able to conclude that y is equal to z. So this is one way to prove this. Another way is by utilizing a little more than what we actually know, uh, or what, what is in the axioms, right? So the thing we know in the axioms is that an inverse exists, but then what we prove later on is that inverses are unique. Consequently, when we write down xy equals the identity, this automatically implies that y is an inverse, even the inverse of x. But when we write down xz equals e, this implies that z is the inverse of x. Okay, so both of these are because inverses are unique. In groups. Ah, so both y and z are the inverse, and so that tells you that y is equal to z. Okay, so a couple of different ways you can go about doing this. All right, we'll see everybody next time.